Okay, this tutorial video is uh, the Improving Productivity tutorial. Uh, if you got to this stage, congratulations, you've passed the other three. Uh, and now it's a case of just finishing this off. Uh, this is the fourth and final exam. Um, the pass rate, you need 55%. Um, the exam takes uh, roughly an hour. There is a diagnostic, which you're more than welcome to log on and do. You should have that assigned to you. And if you haven't got a credit, just come and ask me. Um, and I'll give you a credit to do that. However, what we've found in the past is that because it's a combination, okay, um, of Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, all the skills you've done already, all we need to really show you, which is what we're going to do in the next 20 minutes, is how to kind of access the exam and make sure that you get the question read thoroughly and therefore execute the skill or skills that they ask you to do. Okay, so the first bullet point, improving productivity will ask you to use all your skills from PowerPoint, Word and Excel. Improving productivity will try and get you to combine several skills in each of the packages. So it's not just a case of doing one simple task to get one percentage for one question. Okay, they might ask you to do three or four. Some of the questions are a bit quicker than others. Okay, uh, some of them look quite significant and I'm going to show you one or two of those uh, as an example. Uh, sometimes you'll be asked to get info from different sources okay so one of the key things I'll get you to have a look at is um, how they might ask you to um, get some data and put it into things like Excel so it's not Excel data it's something like a text file so you can't find it by going file and open in Excel. I'm going to show you that question four of the diagnostic. It, it certainly demonstrates that. Okay, so it's about combining the packages. All right, so here we go. Let's have a look. Here's the example question four. So I'm going to just use the diagnostic just to show you how they question and set up and kind of lull you into a slight false sense of security. Okay, so question number four on the diagnostic. I'm going to read it thoroughly. Okay, then I'm going to maximize Excel. I'm going to talk a little bit about what they're trying to make you think about. Okay, so question number four. The file data is found in the Z drive. Create a pie chart of your choice in the open spreadsheet using the data provided in the file data. Insert the data in the cells range A1 to B5. Ensure your chart displays category name and value uh, data labels and that there is a title called ratio of readers using the font size 24 points. Then finally save the file to the Z drive and name it total readers. Now I've done this in lessons uh, so you might be familiar with this it might be a bit of a recap uh, but there's nine different tasks there in that one question. So nine sequential, in sequence tasks that need to be done. Let's just look at the first bit. The file data is found in the Z drive. They give you a blank Excel document. So there's a blank Excel document. If I go to file and open, I can't find a data file because it doesn't exist as an Excel file. This Excel file is called book one and it's an Excel document. There's nothing on it whatsoever. This is simply being opened up to give you the opportunity to place the data from that data file into A1 to B5. It's got nothing whatsoever to do, data file, with Excel. So how do we go about doing that? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to realize that we can go to our documents or computer and we can find the Z file. There it is and there is a data file. This happens to be a text document and if I open that up you can see that you've got it in a very notepad very simplified form. It's not Excel, it's not Word, it's just an, a text rich file. So what we would need to do is we would need to create a pie chart using that data but we need to get that data into Excel to make the pie chart. Okay, so go back to the data and there are a couple of ways we can do it. We can type it if we want but there's quicker ways. Go to edit. Remember we can't right click so I'm not using right click. Edit and copy. So all I've done is select the data and copied it. And close that down now. I don't need it again. And go to that Excel file and it does say on the question A1 to B5 which basically means if I paste that 
a1 to b5. So I've got the data inside Excel. It now allows me to do the next part. Create a pie chart of your choice in the open spreadsheet using the data provided in the file data. Insert the data into cells A1 to B5. Okay, create a pie chart basically. So, highlighted the data, I'm going to insert, I'm going to choose a pie chart of my choice. Okay, I'll do the first one. Notice how I've got Excel open fully. Okay, if you've successfully passed Excel, which you should have done, you should have realized that minimizing and then switching, or maximizing, should I say, and then switching the question off and on is definitely the way forward. And it's very frustrating when I see people trying to work in Excel in this tiny little space below. Okay, so switch the question off and on by clicking it at the bottom once you've maximized uh, your Excel document. So back to the question. Ensure your chart displays category name and value data labels. So back to the Excel document. Uh, we've done this before, but if we go to the add chart element and we go to data labels, we can click on the arrow and we can go to more options. And in more options, we have two choices. We can do the data values, which is now ticked on because it automatically does it. And we can also do category name. So if I just show you the question, that's the category name and value data labels. Back to the Excel document, category name and value has been ticked. And the title ratio of readers using font size 24. Chart title ratio of readers press enter check the spelling ratio of readers if I want I can move that down so I can see it ratio of readers ratio of readers working fine uh, but back to the question and it just says font size 24 haven't done that yet so I need to increase the font size by going into home and again this is all stuff you should have been able to do because we've done similar things in Excel so you should have passed all this already and then finally save the file to the Z file as total readers so it's file save as Z file keep it as an Excel book but change it from book one to I forgot what it says now total readers total readers Check the question before. Spelling. Capital T, capital R. Total readers. It's to the Z file. It's not been asked to change the file type. Click save. Okay. Back to the question. And we would answer that. Okay. I'm going to have a little look at some of the others. All right. Session's timed out. There you go. That's brilliant. Uh, okay sorry about that uh, just timed out just clicked on uh, question 5 just to show you the difference all right so not all the questions like question 4 uh, are so extensive but if we just go back to question 4 like I say there were nine different elements there that you need to get right any one of those elements uh, meant that you uh, you couldn't do it also with improving productivity I know we're doing the diagnostic here or we're on the diagnostic you cannot flag any of the questions you have to be, go through the questions one by one so you can't go back to any of them uh, so you know it's well worth making sure you have done the diagnostic if you at home if you can in order to get through them question five is a much simpler open the price list from the Z file change the contents to e3 okay so you can see you know you got Excel it's a simple file and open from the Z drive price list all right, so we need to maximize Excel, computer, Z, price list, and change something, uh, E3, E3, publication for, to read full year. So you can see there's a big difference in the number of ta tasks that you need to do to get question five right. Question six is similar. Minimum advert price advertising the rates okay calculate 
minimum advert type now with questions like this this is a good example of where you would actually you would need to uh, look at the Excel document and you need to think about what's actually happening so if this was the question that I was doing in the exam first thing I'd do is I'd, I'd look at in cell h3 so I wouldn't look any further I'd go and find what it, the hell is in h3 right it's blank minimum advert price then it figure out calculate the minimum advert price of the adverts range in b4 to e7 b4 b4 to e7 so in there so what's the minimum advert price so you need to use common sense over these questions then you need to figure out the, how the exam is expecting you to pass it okay so what skills are they looking for so the minimum advert price by the looks of it is 25 pounds so you need to get 25 pound in there but of course they don't want you to type it in that'd be ridiculous what they're asking for is a calculation a formula some way of doing it and if you cast your mind back to the minimum formula that we did from auto sum you just need to draw the box over that press enter and you see you get 25 in there so it's a formula you can see that equals minimum done through the auto sum using the minimum and redrawing your box like so okay so a lot of these questions don't tell you to put a, a, a minimum formula of that you know it's worded in a slightly different way okay all the questions are calculate total uh, using the special discount table excel question just like we had from the excel uh, exam on its own but this time rather than telling you how to do it they're expecting you to figure out what that sentence in the question is actually asking you to do so in cell b16 the first thing i do is find b16 there's b there's 16 okay it should be familiar to you from the Excel document. We've got a 15% discount. We've got a total page. It's wanting you to work something out of the special discount deal of current total. Okay, so how do we work that out? Calculate the current total of rates in the special discount deal table. Uh, current, da, 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 da. current total. So it's asking for a sum formula. okay so check the question again calculate the current total of the rates yeah current calculate the current total total is adding them up of the special of the rates in the special discount deal okay so uh, to me we've done that question number eight uh, and so on and so on. I'm not going to do them all, okay, with 13 minutes into the, uh, the exam. What I will do is I'll start showing you where we move on. Uh, so up to question 15, we're still on Excel. You can see there's a few more up to question 30. Uh, what we start doing is moving on to PowerPoint, okay? So again, you've got to cast your mind back to some of the PowerPoint questions that we did, flipping the image, okay? fairly simple remember we click on anything in PowerPoint whether it's the title page or whatever we should have a dialog box like drawing tools or picture tools or text box tools format tools that should appear okay so the majority of which will be found in here so if we want to flip that image we need to click on format and there you go it got rotate and we can flip it okay along the horizontal so um, you know we carry on through the diagnostic obviously there's a lot more in the diagnostic we get to number question 48 and um, we get some of the questions uh, that are theory based so you have to tick one of them I'm not going to do these and um, we move on to question 53 we should eventually get on to some word questions somewhere in here okay um, struggling to find them that's still there we go there's a word one okay so the priceless spreadsheet is found is uh, use the figure calculated in the minimum advert to complete the sentence below so it's wanting you in this question to go and find an excel document again it's it's making sure that you're aware that an excel document can't be opened in word so we have to go to the document area in computer z drive we need to find the price list we need to look at that using the figure calculated uh, what was it asking for in the question Manner advert to a sense of blow. Add to the third paragraph uh, ending 
document in the Maverick, we close the Excel document before answering. So again, we've got a more complicated question there. Okay, uh, something that I can do if you want me to, uh, and then we'll leave it at that. So the price list spreadsheet is found as we've opened it. Use a figure calculated in the minimum advert price. Where's minimum advert price? 25. Okay, uh, use that to complete the sentence below uh, on the Word document. Minimum advert price. Below is the table. There we go. No. Have I got around missing something? Minimum advert price. Oh, don't even stand the question yourself. Use the figure calculator to complete the sentence below. At the end of the third paragraph, ending three mixed books, add the text. So we need to add some text. All right, where? All right. Mm. At the end of the third paragraph, end in three mixed publications. At the end of the third par paragraph, uh, finishing mixed publications. Add the text, the minimum advert price. Okay, so I'm going to make that a bit smaller. I'm going to find that area again. And I'm going to write the minimum advert price is pound sign and if I remember right it was 25 pounds full stop just check that price is 25 pound uh, check punctuation so zero zero there we go so back to that close Excel before answering the question so you can see a lot of these questions hark back to some of the exam questions that you had before but they're much more complicated but you just need to read the question more than once more than twice in this case more than three times you need to keep referring back to that question so maximize and minimize helps a lot maximize usually is the way forward bring in the question open and closed so that you can refer back to it and chunk these questions into small bite-sized pieces don't try and read the entire question and do everything in once read the full question to begin with but then chunk it up and execute each little task one by one at the end read the question and make sure that you have done everything it's asked in the right order making sure that if it's any file save as that you've done that any things like titles at different uh, sizes and fonts that you have done that so not to get he uh, caught up with the fact that it's one task these are more than one activity tasks per question okay end of the day none of these questions are brand new to you you've done all of these questions even the ones that have got five or six or seven or eight little tasks you've done each of the tasks individually already in either PowerPoint Word or Excel so there is nothing new thrown at you you know the formulas are all the same formulas uh, the skills are all the same skills okay so take your time over the questions you get a full hour and all you need is 55 percent to pass so now you're ready to have a little practice go through the diagnostic through the bcs site google search ecdl psi online use your login details that are on the piece of paper that i've given you now several times and have a go at the ecdl improving productivity diagnostic before your exam Okay, good luck and you should be pretty sorted.